This is high core count CPU owners, and this is everyone else. Just cute in comparison. I mean, look at this, a 12 core CPU on the left side is rendering this video 14% faster than the eight core one on the right side. And it's 32% faster in Blender. So having a lot of cores on your CPU is better, right? Yeah, check one minute to render the same scene in Blender with an NVIDIA graphics card. And around two minutes to render that same scene with an AMD graphics card, which is typically thought to be slower at this type of thing. Still faster on a six and a half year old mid-range graphics card from 2016. Having a lot of CPU cores feels like a subtle flex nowadays when GPUs do basically what they do for general productivity stuff just way better and way faster nowadays. How is a high core count CPU in gaming then? I mean, Cyberpunk on the high settings, it's 9% faster on the eight core one. Again, the less cores, it's faster. And then if you turn on some upscaling, it's 13% faster on the eight core. And in Last of Us Part One, it's 20% faster with FSR quality on. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, 29% faster without any upscaling. And in terms of competitive games like Overwatch 2, it's 10% faster. In Counter-Strike 2, it's 10% faster as well. And in Fortnite, the eight core one is 6% faster. In Remnant 2, another UE5 game, it's 13% faster. If you wanna look at these numbers a little bit more in depth and see other testing that I did, I do have a spreadsheet linked in the description if you're interested. What it seems to be is that games care about the quality of the cores on your CPU and not necessarily the quantity of them. And it can be very easy to get sucked into getting as many cores on your CPU as possible. Like say for example, Intel's i5s that are only $330 have 14 cores available to them. That sounds like a crazy deal, but when you look at it in terms of performance, it has eight cores. This one has 14 cores. Yet, when you go to the numbers, they perform about the same. And this info is provided by Gamers Nexus here, so thank you very much for that, Steve. It doesn't seem like games, generally speaking, need all of these cores or anything like that. Not to mention that high core count CPUs have other issues. And there is a reason when you go onto the Steam hardware survey that most people have a six core CPU or even a four core CPU or an eight core. If you wanna look at the higher core count ones, only 5% of the population or a 16 core one, which is kind of common as well, is only two and a half percent of the population that own these higher core count CPUs because their price is a huge factor in that. Today we tested the Ryzen 9 5900X and this CPU MSRP, so it's original suggested price, is $550 back in 2020. And the CPU that we compared it to today, this one was only $450. And this could be dramatized by Intel's like 14900K processor, which has 24 cores. You can find this processor for about $614 nowadays compared to AMD's 7800X3D processor, which is only about $370 brand new according to hardware unboxed here generally the 7800 x3d is faster than the 14900k in terms of gaming performance plus with these other cores the 14900k sucks back a lot more power and let me just make my little camera disappear just like that and you can see that the 14900k in gaming loads this is with an rtx 4090 with it was 555 watts compared to the 7800X3D, which in general was performing at about 425 watts. So more cores can also draw more power. And that can make the lower core CPUs like the 7800X3D a lot more practical for a lot more people. Because one, you don't need as beefy of a power supply. Two, you won't have to drum up your power bill or your electricity bill, especially where you live, electricity might be more expensive. As well, it's not gonna kick out nearly as much heat into your room. That can be a major advantage for lower core CPUs. Although I'm not just here to shit on high core count CPUs. Obviously there are some applications where having more cores can be a little bit more useful. Like if you're a heavy multitasker, you got Discord, Spotify, the Minecraft Wiki, Twitch stream, OBS, a bunch of pictures of Quagsire for some reason on your screen. I don't know why, don't ask. And you have all of these things on a single monitor while playing a game. Maybe having more cores on your CPU 
might be useful for you, though I personally don't feel this, and I would say I'm a decently heavy multitasker. Another area where higher core count CPUs can be useful is if you're doing a lot of file compression or decompression. If this doesn't apply to you, then you're probably like the majority of people because yes, it is faster, but I don't think a lot of people are consistently compressing files on their, their desktop or whatever. And generally speaking, even a lower core CPU is still gonna be able to compress things at a decent enough rate that I don't think it's going to annoy even the average person. And let's bring it back to the start with high core CPUs major advantage, and that is within productivity applications. And a lot of productivity apps, GPUs are just faster nowadays. GPU acceleration is out there. There's optimized hardware on your graphics card that as long as you have a decent card, it's probably gonna do that task faster than your CPU could. Instead of you know blowing a bunch of money on a high core count CPU that isn't very efficient at doing these things, what you can really do is just get a faster GPU with that budget and you're gonna be flying through these apps and doing productivity way faster than ever before. So what I'm trying to say is that most people probably will not use or will not even notice the difference between a mid-range core count CPU versus a high core count version of a CPU. And what tends to matter more is actually the quality of the cores themselves. So if you're interested in upgrading your CPU or anything like that, what I would recommend instead of getting a, say an older higher core count CPU, like say this 3950X, this is a 16 core 32 thread processor. That sounds amazing. What I'd actually recommend doing is spending the same amount of money and buying a lower core count, but newer CPU. So say here the 770X, this is going to be a lot faster for a lot more people, especially in gaming workloads, or even in just general day-to-day -day tasks, because each of those individual cores is significantly faster than those that are on the 3950X. Like you will feel this difference. That's why for a majority of people, if you are on a tight budget, six cores is perfectly fine. In most games, it is not going to limit your GPU or anything like that. But if you were to take my honest advice, I'd recommend trying to stretch your budget to get an eight core CPU instead, because that seems to be the sweet spot. It gives you all the cores that you need for gaming, usually about six, Plus, you'll have a couple extra cores to do background tasks like Spotify or Discord or Chrome on another monitor. That just gives you a little bit of headroom and you won't take as much of a performance hit by doing more on your system. I just wanted to make this video to help you guys save some money because it can be very easy to fall into that trap to think you need as many cores as possible. Really, what I've noticed in the past little while, high core count CPUs, even for productivity, are becoming more and more useless. I might be a little bit wrong on this. If you guys can think of any other use cases for high core count CPUs that you guys personally do, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And maybe I can see if those use cases are valid. Anyways, let me know what you think. That's been it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.